सॉरी तो दैट वाज द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम के 2014 फॉर द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन q इक्वल्स टू स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ 2q e टू द पावर माइनस 1 plus 12 alpha cos b and p equals to square root of 2q e to the power minus alpha minus 1 sin p to be canonical what is the value of alpha again you have to just calculate the poisson bracket between q and p and you just take out the constant coefficient outside of your bracket and you are ended up having this form you can do that by is very simple And since this term has to be one, so that means its power has to be zero. So we just put that power equals to zero. From there, we calculate the value of alpha. It is comes out to be two. Okay. So there are also some portions based on same concept in Gate two thousand nineteen, and also two thousand twenty one, and also in two thousand twenty two. So you can see that the concept is very simple, but it's very important too. And this one is from two twenty two exam gate exam, and it was asked on Telegram. A particle of mass one kg is released from a height of one meter above the ground surface, and when it reaches the ground, what is the value of Hamilton actions for the motion in joule second? G is the acceleration due to gravity, and gravitation potential is zero on the ground. So you have to calculate what is the Hamilton actions. and you can see we have initially so that there is this principle of least action which says that particle is going to take the path for which the least action is minimum and that action is given by this formula s is equals to t1 to t2 dt lagrangian so we have write lagrangian of our system and differentiate Integrated with respect to time, we can calculate what is our action. Okay, so this is also valid for this case here. You have a particle which is just falling from that much height. So you have this particle and which is falling from that much height. So it is going to take. We know that it is going to take a straight line path, but this straight line path is the one where action is minimum. And since we are Taking this vertical coordinate, let's say our generalized coordinate is that direction, and you know your potential energy is mgh if it is zero at the ground surface. So you can write potential energy as mgz and kinetic energy mz dot square. So you got this condition. You have this particle which is initially at rest and it is just fall off to this height. Z equals to zero from z equals to one. So initial velocity of your particle z dot is zero, and at time t equals to zero, and at z equals to zero, this is your final time when it is reaches after moving a distance of one meter. And we are going to calculate what is that EF that we do not know since we have to integrate from t1 to t2 now. So t1 we know it is zero, but what is t2? So to calculate that. What we do is we take this whole as a function f, which is like one by two. So we take this as a function f, and we want it. This has shown that your action has to be extremum if it is going to move from this height to this height. It is only this motion is possible along the straight line if your action is extremum. And when your action is extremum. That means the function inside that is going to satisfy this your La Lagrange equations. So you take your d by dt, and actually this equation is coming from calculus of variation, the same Lagrange equation of motions. So uh, you are familiar with that the Lagrange equation of motion is given by d by dt del l by del q dot minus del l by del q equals to zero. So you say that your s is given by l d t, and your s is extremum means delta s has to be zero, and it is only possible if your l satisfy these equations. So this is the thing we have to use here. Your function s is given 
is extremum only when f is going to satisfy this equation. So we take our f, differentiate with respect to z dot z, and we are ended up having equation of motion for this system. Z double dot will become equals to z. Let's take m equals to one. Now, if you integrate with respect to t, this is the term, and now apply the initial condition at time t equals to zero. Your initial velocity z dot is zero. From that, c is zero. So this is your initial velocity. Now integrate it with respect to t again. Z equals to this term. Now if apply the initial condition that at time t equals to zero, your particle is at height minus one, means it is going upward direction. So from that you can calculate your c one to be minus one, and this turns out to be this form. So we have to calculate what is your final time when it is touches the ground, and when it touches the ground, we know that z has to be zero. So we just put z equals to zero at time t equals to t f, and so final time is given by square root of two by z second. Now we put all this value of t f, z, z dot inside this equation first because we have to calculate our action. So our action will become integral zero to two by z, one by two, and z dot is square. Z dot will become z t, and m z z will become z. So if you integrate this expression, uh, this is the simple integration, and then just put the value of t as square root of two z. So your action is turns out to be this value. Okay, and this was the question from gate twenty twenty two. So you can see that today's topic are very important, all from the gate perspective. So if you have any doubt anywhere, you can ask. There are some ten things that we have used directly from calculus of variations, but you can see that we are just chain rule, and it is like if you have h which is a The function of q, p, and t. Then, when you calculate d h by d t, then you have to take into account all these things. L h by d q, t q by d t, which we have written as q dot directly, plus l h by d p, t p by d t as d dot, plus l h by d p. Just this formalism we have used directly in our whole derivations. And you have to just calculate cos one bracket if your transformation has to be canonical. So, if you have any doubt, you can ask. Hello. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, ma'am, I have two problem related to oscillation. Small oscillation. Uh, I have sent two questions just to verify my answer, and uh, second question uh, just to tell the approach. Okay, so you have sent it on Telegram. Yes, yes. So I will uh, tell you after the class your question solution. The approach is correct, or the answer is correct. both okay ma'am okay so anyone have any doubt or also let me know the next class topic which you people want me to cover this one is very important topic i have forgot to cover it yes apna Ma'am, can you please show the slides once? All the slides. Okay. This. Ma'am, I'm I joined very late, so the beginning, from the beginning. Can you please show? Okay. So in the beginning, we have just talk about the coordinate transformations. So. How can you can change from one coordinate system, let's say r theta to x y coordinate, and all the class is just how and we just replace this 
R theta with capital P cube and X Y with small p cube. You can do that always when you are trying to do generalized coordinate systems. And one of the important things that we have remember is even if you have coordinate system with change, your Hamilton equations of motion is not going to be changed. So you have new Hamiltons. According to that, you have new equation, but overall equation of motion is not going to change now. Either you calculate it using Newton's law, using Lagrangian mechanics, using Poisson's bracket, or using Hamilton's calculation. The equation of motion has to be same. So these are the equation of motion, and they are just going to same even if you change your coordinate system. So this is what we have talked. And since we wanted to calculate what is the generating functions, so someone asked some question. We will cover that. So uh, we wanted to know what is the generating function that will help from going from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. And to calculate that generating functions, we are using that principle of least actions, which said that if our particle is moving from x1 to x2, it is always going to be taken a path for which this action is extremum. So we okay, can clear okay so even if you have seen that very simple thing that you fall a particle from the top of your floor and it is going to hit your ground and in a straight line path and this straight line path is such that this action has to be minimized so all and there are certain conditions in which your particle is moving parabolic condition so all these are related to that principle of least action. Even your light also follows this principle of least action. In that case, it is known as Fermat principle. And we have used that for solving your problem. Clear, ma'am. Okay. Someone said that next last topic will be yes. The magnetic vector potential. Yes, magnetic vector potential. So what we wanted to cover in particular about that? When you say like a the disc rotate, how will you magnetic vector potential? How will you get the sphere? It's a tough wala derivation. It's not going to get the spherical. Because you have to coordinate system change. Theta phi x y z s a. I think you are asking for that one derivation. Yes, ma'am. Derivation part we will not know what you can get math and you can get questions. Okay. Uh, you... uh -huh. As a disk or it is moving, what is the magnetic vector potential and the same conditions for. Sphere also, Spare. and then you calculate surface current or in volume current differently in these cases. And from that, you calculate your A and B. Okay, so these are two, three different questions. We will cover in a gate class. We have this one compensated class left. अभी क्लास रहता है ना उसमें हमें कंपेंसेट क्लास की उसमें लेना है उसमें हम गेट के क्वेश्चन ही सॉल्व करेंगे सो उसमें ये क्वेश्चन ले सकते हैं मैग्नेटिक वेक्टर पोटेंशियल से लेते हैं हां मैम आई थिंक योर नोट्स इज सफिशिएंट फॉर द प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग कौन सा अह यू हैव सेड ईएमटी नोट्स यहां पे Uh, you have uh, said uh, before uh, three or four months. Yeah. Uh, can you explain clear to me what you want me to ask? Uh, Ma'am, uh, we we don't need to uh, do hard problem related uh, like this. Uh, you uh, you have said a, a notes copy. That is the sufficient for exam, right? Ha. Uh. 
एक्चुअली ऐसा होता है ना गेट एग्जाम में कुछ क्वेश्चन लेंथी आते हैं बहुत टैकल तो हो सकते हैं बट वो करने नहीं होते क्योंकि बहुत टाइम कंज्यूम हो जाता है और स्कोर बहुत खराब हो जाते हैं उससे तो कोशिश करना कि क्वेश्चन को एकदम से कर सको क्लिक होते ही उसको फटाक से कर देना और उसके बाद टाइम बचता है तो किसी क्वेश्चन में लग जाना ओके या अपर्नस से समथिंग मैम न्यूटोनियन मैकेनिक्स एंड इलास्टिक रिलेशन दैट पार्ट टेकन न्यूटोनियन मैकेनिक्स उसमें से ज्यादा इतना वो नहीं होता ना टेक तो क्वेश्चन न्यूटोनियन ओके इलास्टिक कोलिजन दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन यू आर आस्किंग मैम आई थिंक दैट आर नॉट इन द सिलेबस गेट सिलेबस दैट इज फ्रॉम द नेट सिलेबस न्यूटोनियन मैकेनिक्स आस्क इन इन नेट एग्जाम आई सो इन क्या सपना इन स्पीक आर देन नो आर देन नो प्रॉब्लम Okay, and you can ask any other. So, magnetic vector potentials related question we will solve in doubt solving class. We are going to have one type solving class only. Just for in which we can just cover only the questions from previous year gate. Now, in next class, we will cover which topic? Cover. Ma'am, that pendulum topic. पेंडुलम से रिलेटेड जो प्रॉब्लम आते हैं कैलकुलेटिंग लैग्रेंजियन एंड हैमिल्टोनियन यस दैट वन ओके सो वी कैन हैव वन मोर क्लास ऑन कैलकुलेटिंग लैग्रेंजियन एंड हैमिल्टोनियन एंड इन व्हिच वी कैन सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू पेंडुलम basically we will learn how to write the kinetic energy part and potential energy part using that okay thank you right now okay the question and so next class will be how to calculate these terms okay then we will finish today's class thank you bye bye thank you